Okay, so um, just going to go through some of the stuff that we went over in the class. Um, some of the MIDI stuff and a bit of rewiring just to kind of help you is, um, go through it at home. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the MIDI creation tool. And we're just going to have a bit of a chat about, uh, we'll look at Kong and we'll look at how to use the basics of Kong. And also we'll look at kind of sequence of MIDI down below. So I'm just going to open this MIDI create file. So the, the most important thing to understand about Kong is just the basics. So Kong is basically, uh, it's, it's a sampler. So it allows you to basically trigger different sounds like audio files. It can be anything from vocals to drums. Any kind of sample you can find, you can assign it to these individual pads and then trigger it with it with those individual pads. Um, the good thing about it is it's kind of it's very easy to get your get your head around and it's you can get some good some really good sounds kind of really fast out of the device. So um, what I'll kind of have a look at here is I'll just go over first of all how you kind of go through patches and we'll open some patches and look at some MIDI. For the time being, I think that's the best way you should approach it. As you get more into sound design, you'll start to understand a bit more about kind of what samples to pick and and kind of basically designing your own Kong patches. But once we get into a bit more advanced drum design and advanced rhythm sections, I'll be going back over this and, and also going back over the drum rack in Ableton a bit more anyway. Um, so the first thing to do is basically how you browse through the different kind of patches very easy and they're very kind of user friendly just click on the browse patch button and you'll see you just go into the factory sound bank in reason and it's straight away you can kind of see the kong patches that are here so you've got your straight away you've got your deep house down, down tempo you've got kind of all these different kits like from electronic to hip-hop to house so these are all pretty well made already and and, and, and it means that you've got a, a good starting block to kind of work with so uh, for me, I'm going to try something like, um, I'll just try a house kit. It's really just to, to demonstrate kind of the more, the more the MIDI area and kind of how to use that. I don't really care about the sounds just yet. Um, so what we're going to look at is is um, kind of the actual sequencing of it down below and all these different kind of parts and these tools and what, they'll, what they can allow you to do. So you'll see that straight away I've got all my different sounds the whole way across here. Like I've got I've got my bass drum snare, bass drum clap, hi hat, hi hat open, all these different kind of sounds the whole way up for for me to use. So um, what I'll kind of do is I'll I'll record them, or I'll, I'll I'll sequence those sounds down here, and just do simple kind of drum beats and simple kind of um, progressions and rhythms. So. When we get down to this area here, which is called the arrange section down here, you've got some main, main kind of uh, things to look at and main kind of areas to, of interest. So the first thing is um, your tool section, okay? Your tool section is basically what allows you to create and move different things, which I, I went over in the class, they're called MIDI, MIDI regions or MIDI blocks. And MIDI blocks just are basically, they're kind of blocks of information that are um, that are triggering the different sounds and different samples up here. So let's say I create a block, right? So I can click on my pencil tool, or I can highlight the command or the control button if you're using um, a PC. So you press that, and it brings up my pencil, so I can toggle it on and off. So if I have this set to a bar, that means it's going to draw one bar of a block just when I click in. There you go, straight away a bar. All right. Now. I'm only really interested in, in making one bar of music. I'm not really, I don't want to go, want to go much further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to size it down here. So my L and R indicators allow me to size down the loop. So you can see it's jumping by bars. See if I set that smaller, it's going to jump by like quarter beats. You see if I move it, it moves in smaller increments, you see. So the best thing to do is keep it locked on bars for this. So um, the next thing that I do after that is you just double click into this. You can double click into it, and it'll bring up your your kind of uh, your 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 sample trigger, or else you can either toggle it on and off by clicking on this the edit mode function. Edit mode basically just means you can edit your different MIDI kind of notes, and uh, and it just allows you to do that. It's just a different way of doing. It. You can either double click into it, or you can actually just click on the edit mode function. 
Now, as soon as you get in here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, tighten this up and size it up so you kind of have a better view, like working in this little area here is going to be difficult. So you're going to use your um, zoom function. So the zoom function is incredibly easy to use. You just size it down until it takes up enough of the page like that. See, so zoom out, zoom in. It's very, very simple. So it's best off to work kind of, uh, get it kind of all the way across the screen. Now, whenever you click in here, you'll notice that it automatically defaults to a 16th snap. So you'll see the grid is set, like, so there's 16 notes per bar. You see, so there's eight there, eight there. That's one bar, it's a 16. So what I want to change that do is, is I want to make it a bit more easier to work with. So I'll use quarter beats instead. So you'll see straight away when I change the snap, it changes the grid. Like if I bring it to 30 seconds, it gets really small. But usually I stay at quarter beats. And then it's as simple as toggling on my, my draw. So toggle it on with the control key or the command if you're on a Mac. And then I'll just toggle in and draw in my little beats here. So you'll see no matter where I click, it, it, it does a quarter beat. So I can draw in there. And then every second one I can draw in my clap, you know. And then if I want, I can size it down so I can get some hi-hats in. So I can draw like the hi-hats on the, on the, on the, on the eights. And then maybe I can draw like an, an another hi-hat, maybe right at the end, I'll, I'll go to 16 and I'll add a little jump in there and I can even move this one up. So it's, it's on the open hi-hat. So now if I play it, I get, you know, I can kind of get that. Now you'll see the way when I did that, it just goes off the screen. The best thing to do is you just press double stop twice and I'll go back to the start and make sure you have your loop on. You can see it gives you a loop toggle on left and right. So or L is loop toggled. So just make sure you have that on and it will just keep looping over and over and you can work easily within that environment. So again, that's really all you want to get to, to know from the from the mini section reason. Like we're going to go over all the velocity things, like how you can change velocity and stuff as we go along. But really all I want you to get your head around for now is how to actually draw MIDI in, in reason and how to use these little MIDI regions. So go back over this again remember we're not interested in the kong just yet i showed it to you in the class but i'm going to be going into it in much more detail so go back over this again and make sure you have your head around the actual midi functionality and how to create regions